Hi, this is Carrie Brown with Real Estate 101 EXP Realty, and you're listening to Real Estate Zoom International. Today, I am here with Antonio Barboza, and he is in Portugal. Hi, Antonio. Hi, Carrie. Hello, everyone. So we are going to be breaking down what it's like. Obviously, I'm in central Kansas, right smack dab in the middle of the United States, uh, Topeka, Kansas, to be exact. Um, Antonio, where are you located at? Well, I'm in the one of Portugal's best kept secrets, which is the Minho region. It's in the north and it's about 40, 45 minutes away from Porto, which is the biggest city. But I have the advantage of uh, being less than 10 minutes away from uh, from Spain. So I'm in a different country in, in, in just a hop, skip and a jump. Wow, that's awesome. Your background is amazing. Yeah, it's in, that's in the Algarve, um, where uh, the rock formations and beautiful uh, beaches, uh, the most warmest and some sunniest, warmest and sunniest part of Portugal is definitely there in the south. We're here, up here in the north, it's more of a green area, mountain, countryside, rivers. It, it does rain a little more. That's why everything is more green. And that's why it's called like the green region of Portugal, the Minho. What's the average temperature? Uh, in the, like today, for example, it's a beautiful sunny. You would it, it, these are exceptional days. Like today, it's like a high of like uh, 17, 18 degrees, which is like a, a mild mid sixties. Okay, uh, and it, but then here's the thing: like where the difference between up here in the north and in the south is the difference in temperatures, where we can go down to like you know maybe six degrees or so. So it, there's a big change from 16, 17 down to six overnight and in the morning. We're in the south. It's a little more mild, and it, there's not that much of a big change in in temperature. So, but the winters here, you know, generally are like you know 12, 11, 12 degrees. Um, you characterize some 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 warm sunny days when it's not raining. It's beautiful sunny days, and uh, but for the most part, you know, Portugal is one of the the most uh, uh, sunniest countries of Europe. So um, that's yeah. why but we'll, we'll get more into that in a little bit about the weather here. But but for the most part, it's like, you know, 60 degrees or so for here and, and down south, maybe it's in closer to the 70s, you know, 72 or so. Awesome. OK, so when we were just getting started, we were talking about the differences in real estate. So here, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to look at different properties. But first, let's talk about the differences as far as the process is concerned. So here we're a title state. Um, how would you say, you, so whenever you say title state, the title company is reviewing the title. They're making sure that there are no liens, no judgments, the mortgage gets paid. All of that happens at closing. So if we are in the process of the, the closing we get a notification saying, hey, there's this lien out here we need for that to get settled. Child support, you know, some sort of bad debt. You just never know what's going to come up on those liens. And so we get that straightened out during the process so that it gets settled at closing if it actually hasn't already been settled. How would that compare to where you are? <laughs> no, we're 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 probably a title state as well or mixed you know it's because you know here the you know when you're looking at property right and you once you decide you make an offer etc you can you make a down payment or you have like it goes into an escrow account right that's how uh, normally in the u.s here um it we don't have we don't start off with like we start off with the um it's a permissory contract OK, where the owner uh, promises to sell to uh, the inter interested buyer. OK, and uh, at that point, um, it's already done because any liens, uh, mortgages, you know, debt, whatever, it's registered automatically. Like, uh, so you see it, it's there. The land office registry, every single property there, it's registered whether it's land, whether it's a home, whether it's a commercial space, uh, there, even, if, even if it's a car, whatever it is, there's a, there's a, a land or office registry for that specific um, item, you know, for that specific house, right? Uh, or land. And so it's the, the notary, which does those contracts, could be a lawyer as well. Uh, they do their due diligence 
right at that moment when they do that promissory contract. Okay, so they first verify, you know, before they uh, and um, and then we the the contract is done and the the owner promises to sell. Um, the buyer promises to buy, it's given a 10% deposit. And generally, whether it's a 60 days, 90 days, whatever contingencies can go on the contract, getting a loan, home inspection, um, whatever, <laughs> just any contingencies will be listed on there. Um, and the house has to be, uh, uh, or the property, uh, the day of the closing, for example, if there's a lien on the property, not a lien, because uh, if there's a mortgage, a lien is, is, is a bad, is a bad thing. It's a bad yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's normal that you're going to have a mortgage, right? On a home. And so, um, the bank that, ha that holds that mortgage is there at the notary that day. And, uh, they're given, uh, the buyer has, a, has a special check, a certified check in the balance that's owed to pay off that mortgage. And then the, the bank gives a document saying that you're that it's free, even for a new bank to put a new mortgage. And so the day of the closing, um, every, if there's any liens that, imagine you did the contract, the promise to buy uh, 60 days before, and then something went wrong and you know whatever, there was a lien or another mortgage, it would show up on there. But the property has to be sold without any of those liens, right? Uh, because the notary will not do the transaction of the closing completion. Um, and that is when you transfer the title automatically from, and it's done simultaneous. The minute that you sign and the notary asks, have you received payment? Yes. Uh, automatically gets registered into that database of the land office registry. So you know already if it has a new mortgage from a new bank, it has or none, if, if anything, uh, in your title, in your name, you know what I mean? Like, you know, in the name of the property, you are the name of the owner of the building with a, a, a mortgage that's owed uh, and all the, all the specifics are on there as well. Everything is registered. So it's done simultaneously. Like there's no, um, the only thing is like if, if within that 60 day period, a lien can be registered on the property, whatever, a court uh, hearing, something, you know, whatever uh, can be done. But that has to be verified uh, before the day of the closing, and then it gets done. Uh, but normally, like, and but but it's built in into the contract that the property has to be sold, of course, without any liens or mortgages. It's, you know, so it's without any debt. Sounds very familiar to ours. Very, very similar. So whenever the land passes some places there are leasehold estates and things like that where you're technically renting it seems the property does the actual land that the property sits on does that transfer with title is that actually yours yes it's it, portugal doesn't have leasehold properties it's all freehold when you buy the land even if you buy a land and doesn't have a house what, because there's two uh, there's two articles it's called the rustic which is for land and the urban which is a house so if it's it just land, it's a rustic article um, and uh, it, it's yours. You can transfer, uh, to, uh, you can uh, you, you know, leave it to uh, your heirs, you know, for inheritance, you can give it away, but it's yours to do it because it, there's no lease, you know, you buy it, if you buy it with the house, it's registered house and land and there's a special, um, everything is written, the, you know, like for example, like the size of the house, the square meters of the plot, everything is in that land office registry, uh, but it is yours. There is no, like it is in the UK or even in other countries uh, where you you don't buy, you can have use of the house and the land for whatever, a hundred years, 40 years, 50 years. Here, no, you buy it, it's yours. It's outright yours. That's awesome. Okay, so now- You just have to pay, you just have to pay his property uh, 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 taxes, that's it, which is very, very cheap here in Portugal property uh, property taxes every uh, on a yearly basis that you pay awesome so now we're going to start sharing what those properties look like <laughs> okay all right one second here you see that all right yeah i see the zoom uh, real estate 101 um and then i guess if you've yeah kansas topeka <laughs> <laughs> that would be me and you are in portugal look at those postcards they're gorgeous all right so starting with this one so price range 
we just skipped over the hundred thousand dollar price range. I didn't see where you'd sent me anything in that price category. So this one falls. Uh, yeah, the, the hundred thousand euro price range is usually um, flats. Um, you know, um, like two bedroom, three bedroom flats or so. Uh, that's in that hundred, even less than a hundred thousand euros. Uh, that's that bracket uh, there, or even like a small little property in the countryside or something like a two bedroom or one bedroom property. Um, and those are, those are listed. <laughs> those, we, we don't have a lot of those listings. So whenever you say flat, what would that look like? Is it just like a studio or is it well, one bedroom? It could be a, could be a bi level, like a two bedroom, three level, uh, you know, condominium, you know, like an apartment um, or one you know, flat, like um, that's more of a probably a British term. Um, but a, you know, like a condo, uh, basically, okay. gotcha. or even, even a semi-attached house, uh, uh, you know, the semi-attached as well. Um, but primarily in, in that price bracket, it's more of a condominium, like one bedroom, two bedroom, um, studio apartments as well. Uh, you know, anywhere from a studio to, uh, two or three bedroom apartments you could find for a hundred thousand euros from up and down from Portugal, um, north to south even in the islands and in between. So on the left is Kansas. This is a house that sold for 255,000, three bedroom, two full bath, one and a half, or, I'm sorry, one half bath, two car garage, 2,795 square feet. The lot was like 136 by 319. So it was deep, had woods in the back and the taxes were $2,672 a year. And this was built in 1946. This particular house had a full ba full basement and it had a, a half story up top, which was a bedroom and a bathroom. Yours is on the on the right. So break that one down for me. OK, it's a three ba uh, three bedroom, uh, very spacious. It has about 300 square meters. So that's about 3000 square feet. OK, roughly um, the plot size is about an acre of land. Okay, um, and it's a, a, has also a two car garage, two car and, and much more. Um, and, you know, it's spacious, whether you go from the kitchen to the living room with fireplace, it's got its ensuite and another full bath, uh, three beautiful porch as well, uh, nicely maintained manicured lawns, everything, um, central heating um, throughout the house. It's a, a and you know all you know all the all the the double glazed windows, all the factors. You know, modern. The house was built about ten years ago. It's less than ten years, and it's a, a very also with the um, the, the pre installation for the solar panels, etc. Um, and the price is two hundred and ninety thousand euros. Okay, and it's real close to. It's right. Uh, it's near main cities. Okay, so it's like right on the suburbs of major cities of like Valencia, Vila Nova Cerveira, which are pretty much in the axis is, you know, motorways, et cetera. So very easy to get around. Wow. You get a lot for your money there. Yeah, it's uh, 290,000 euros. I don't know. That's about 315,000 or 320,000 dollars, American dollars, right? Um, but it's, it's, it's a big property. It's, it's actually, it's, and it's a ranch, you know, right? It's all one, um, one, uh, one story house. And, you know, also characterized by, uh, the mountain and countryside, you could see the mountains, uh, and you know, the forest behind as well. Very impressive. All right. So we're going to the next one. This particular uh, one on the left is Kansas. This one sold for 356,000 five bedroom, three full bath, two car garage, 3,980 square feet finished, full basement, finished walkout um, on 7.78 .7 acres. And the taxes per year were 4,412. And it was built in 2001. Yours is on the right and love the pool. Tell me all about it. <laughs> okay, so th this was a brand new house. This house is a, it was actually, it, it was made to replicate uh, the old traditional Portuguese homes with rustic stone on the exterior. So it's built brand new. Uh, and then it's just finished uh, uh, on the, the, the rendering on the outside is in stone, uh, rustic stone. 
uh, and it's three bedrooms, uh, three full baths as well. You have a, a, um, a nice porch with the barbecue, uh, outdoor uh, exterior bathroom as well. The swimming pool is heated. Um, there is central heating in the, um, in the home as well uh, with a nice fireplace. Um, and it has a carport, has two carports actually. One, one down because the house uh, where you could see it has two entrances. So it has one on the, on, on two streets. Like <laughs> you could come in from either way. It has one on the lower and then one on, on the uh, uh, upper way as well. And so where for both of them, uh, two carports, so for four cars, um, it has about 1,300 uh, square meters, which is almost like a quarter, um, quarter, no, uh, um, um, so yes, about a quarter uh, of an acre of land, okay? Um, again, manicured lawns and gardens. You know, that's the other thing. The property taxes here on this, and this property is 280,000 euros, and it's sold furnished. Actually, we're doing, um, I put it here, but we're, we're by the time, we're done with this uh, uh, by the end of the week. This property will be closed uh, on, um, but it's it sold for 280,000 euros uh, and it's full, sold fully furnished as well. And the property taxes uh, you're looking at per year around 700 euros, okay? Um, because uh, that's, that's the big difference, okay? The, the, the property values, property taxes. There is, there is one thing when we, uh, um, we talked about like on the closing process, uh, there is property transfer tax. When you buy the property, you have to pay a certain stamp duties, etc. cetera. Um, and those things uh, are in addition to the property uh, uh, cost, right? And that generally is between a four and 5% of the total cost of the house. So if you're buying a, a 300,000 euro um, home, uh, you're looking at an extra uh, 12,000 euros, more or less, right? for property transfer tax, lawyers fees, closing fees, registration fees, stamp duties, all the additional costs of buying a property here is based on that more or less about 4% of it. So, and that includes all the, all the costs, but per year you're looking here about 600, 700 euros uh, of a property trans, uh, property value tax, which is very, very economical for, it's one of the lowest in Europe. So we, frame that a different way, but it's basically the same thing. You're looking at three to 5%, well, really three to 4%, all the fees included too. So not a lot of difference yeah. there. Yeah, so it can go, it can go between three. It depends on, on the value of the home and uh, because it can go, it can be at 3%. If it's, you know, the higher bracket you go, of course, then you go up and, you know, but uh, it caps off at like around 5%, but it could be between three, 5%, 4%, three, but usually between three and 4% because our, our main home uh, is around the 200, between 250,000 to 300,000 euros. That's basically, that's our main market. We have markets as well for, for other, you know, for homes of, you know, over half a million, over a million, but our, let's just say our main market is the 250,000 euros to 300,000 euros. Which is probably the reason why they refer to Portugal as being the best place for people to retire because you're not far off from Kansas. As far as pricing no. is concerned, I think you may be more reasonable. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and you think about like, for example, um, <laughs> the cost of living, uh, which is other factors of going out to eat dinner every single day, having those, you know, that, that lifestyle, right? Because that's what it's about. People always want to, there's so many beautiful places in the world to live, right, uh, Carrie? And there's so many, people are looking for it. I think we've learned after two years uh, going through this COVID thing, uh, having like a second passport, people, the mobility, okay, that quality of life uh, where um, people are, that's what they're looking for, whether they're looking going to either Panama, Mexico, Belize, Costa Rica, uh, Portugal, uh, there's a lot of other countries and people are looking for that quality of life and cost of living. And what what can you get for 300,000 euros? Well, this is what you can get. And, that, and then you have the bonus factor of you know, um, you know, somebody uh, living here, uh, the cost of living day by day, the cost of electricity, the cost of gas, the cost of just day by day, the, the what you need necessities, uh, they're a fraction of the cost of what they are in the United States. This is true. I was actually doing some research before we started. And it, whenever it was looking, whenever I cannot talk today and I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, but <laughs> looking at the the cost as far as living each month, 
it basically said you could get by pretty easily for 1400 to $2,000 a month. And that just, yeah. that'd be what you need to live on. Yeah. Yeah. And that's usually like a retirement or a pension or et cetera. Right. Um, and, you know, even, but even, even if you don't buy a home, if you want to rent, um, it's still possible within the 2000, 2200 uh, euros, which is around well, $2,200, you know, more or less 2000 between $2,000, $2,200. Uh, somebody can live very comfortably here, uh, renting a property. Uh, the uh, then we'll, we could talk about it afterwards if you like. But even the 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 health costs, school. You know, we are a social government, so all those things. If somebody having the 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 residency status, you have you're entitled to all those things. You know, of going to a medical doctor, going to a hospital, going your kids going to school. It's free. You pay. You're you're paying taxes. You're paying property transfer. You're paying taxes. For the home, et cetera. So uh, those are the things that the society and, and of working, of having, of living in a social uh, uh, government. And that's where we are at. We're already on the subject. So let's just roll with it. Um, but sure. Yeah. So yeah. healthcare is actually, is it like a government type hospital situation? How do you, what would you do if you, you have to have for for anybody to be a part of the, the health system here you have to be a permanent resident okay and what what that is and there's various ways and we can get in i can talk about that very briefly um you know for any uh, u.s citizen or not let's just say any non-european union citizen okay you can come to portugal for and travel on a 90-day tourist visa it's called the schengen visa and you can travel freely within the 26 countries of the schengen space in europe right portugal is one of them so you could travel Travel freely for up to 90 days and, and so if you come for 90 days you're going to have to have your own um, insurance you know private insurance when you buy an airplane ticket normally you just you take out the complete insurance package right for for everything right and even for health insurance so that's for um uh, that's for the 90 days oops sorry i don't know if i went i disappeared <laughs> you're good okay for the 90 days um you can travel uh you 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 you're gonna have your own insurance right but if somebody's living here permanently after 90 days you're gonna need some residency status and that's done through either um a d7 visa or the passive income visa or the golden visa so you, one of those once you are declared like a permanent resident here okay you're entitled to all the benefits of a portuguese citizen okay and that is health care schools um any social programs uh, um you know that uh, you you any portuguese citizen would have um you you are entitled to as well you know and so um um the 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 government through the pain of taxes everything you're entitled to it as well okay so and for schools for for from beginning up until um uh university level then it's a different uh, area but from grade schools and middle schools high schools it's all part of the social system it's part of the government the government pays for that awesome all right let's check out the next one so this particular one um on the left this home was uh 390,000 five bedroom, three bath, three car garage, 5,075 square feet. The lot was at 70 by 138 and the taxes were $6,485 a year, built in 1968. Yours, holy smokes, look at that view. <laughs> Tell me about that's it. An, that's a marina property, okay? It's in the Algarve, it's in Villa Moda. And Villa Moda is one, it's rated this year, 2022. Uh, as the best one of the best marinas or the best marina in in Europe okay um it's um and this property is right on the marina so and it's a three bedroom uh three bath or two and a half baths um um and it's a uh, bi level okay or um two level home or two level uh it's not a home it's it's an apartment as well okay so uh, but facing right on it has a, a gated area for a bay parking uh, as well and it's but it's just look at that view <laughs> right you know and from from the uh from the bedrooms from the living rooms we actually have uh, uh that's that's actually a, a referral that came from one of our friends out in the uh california and um we have a partner in we work with in the algarve and throughout uh, but this is here where they actually they're i'm not sure if they're gonna they had a they had an offer on it already to close on it so i don't know how the process is 
but it is. And, and the value is 475,000 euros, but it's the view and the location. You are right on the marina with world-class restaurants, shopping, the, the beach is within five minutes walking, uh, golf, you have like, you know, a few different golf communities all around. The location is what it's about. Uh, and the Algarve, you know, again, it's the sunniest, sunniest and warmest part of Portugal. Uh, when anybody thinks of, you know, uh, nice, beautiful beaches, it's the Algarve. And that's where people go for generally for that kind of tourism and living there. It's also a great investment property because there, um, there you can rent out that property. Imagine for 200, 200, 225 euros per night, uh, it could wow. be rented out. Yeah. And, that, and that's cheap. There's others that would go, go cost like 400, 500 euros. Uh, this is around 200. That's a basic uh, um, easy from one, uh, and you know, and then you don't have to do a lot, you know, and it's easily. So somebody as an invest investor, uh, want to take it out at all, if they're not living there all year round, but using as a, as a, uh, um, like, um, a holiday home, okay. A vacation house, um, and renting it out like Airbnb throughout the rest of the year would be very, very, your return on investment is, is superb. I mean, like I said, and uh, between 200 to 225 euros per night. And you, and the Algarve, again, uh, because of the beaches, the sunny weather, um, you know, and the warm, <laughs> uh, that's where people usually go to spend like a holiday and a family and they bring, you know, and that's what it's propitious for. So, but right on the marina. Are there any restrictions against buying a home and using it? basically for an Airbnb or a VRBO? No, no. Um, you, um, do, do you just have to apply for the, it's a license. It's a simple license in City Hall. This one already has actually, that's why I say this. A lot of the properties that some of them that you buy them already have, uh, the local, it's a local accommodation license and it's a simple license. Even if you don't have it, you can get it as long as you submit it to City Hall and you have to just pay a tax on it. And then you have to pay the, the revenue, of course, IRS at the end of the year, you do have to report it. That's the only mandatory thing you have to do. They're going to get you any way you go. So you may as well. <laughs> yeah, you can't get death and taxes, right, Carrie? You can't, you can't escape from. <laughs> <laughs> you really can't. All right. So the next one up. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so this one on the left is in Kansas. It sold for 1,995,000, five bedrooms, six full baths, two half baths, three car garage, 10,891 finished square feet on 1.54 acres, and the taxes per year, 26,107, was built in 2008. Obviously very gorgeous. Yours is also very gorgeous. Tell me all about it. <laughs> yeah, this is a one of a kind um, brand new home. It still uh, has not been uh, lived in. It's finished. This was actually a model, the, the project that was done and it's completely finished. And it has about uh, 6,000 square feet, 600 square meters, Okay, 6,000 square feet. Um, it's a total of four uh, bedrooms plus an office. And then I, in uh, five bathrooms, five full baths, also, you know, a two car garage, um, etc. It has, it's in the beautiful island of Madeira, okay, and superb views. I mean, it, you, didn't, you can't see it here, but you just have nice ocean views everywhere in the home. It's a lot of, it's a, it's a very modern house, okay, all the, what, everything, you know, even the, uh, the touch, uh, you can, <laughs> you could set the temperature from your phone, you know, the domatic, uh, uh, everything is, is done so if somebody's away you want to you want to put the heating on although you don't need it but the cooling you could do it through your phone uh of course solar panels everything and anything you could think of modern uh this is it it's ultra modern home uh the plot size rounds about a quarter of an acre as well but again it's a beautiful uh it's got a pool plus a jacuzzi on the side um the the, the kitchen it's it's just uh, completely like one of those dreams of also with an island island kitchen uh, you know, the, the superb, you know, stainless steel finishings of, of uh, the ovens and the, the countertops in marble, uh, everything. So it's, it's uh, the superior, um, uh, highest quality finishings throughout for sure. And the value is 1,950,000 1, euros. Property, tra uh, property taxes here should go up around uh, 2,000, 2,200 uh, 2, euros per year. Wow. So you, mentioned, you mentioned solar panels. Is that really common there? 
Yeah, because um, solar panel and, you know, before you, any new home, Portugal is very, in Europe, you know, I mean, it has to do with the European Union, but especially Portugal, um, we are at like almost trying to, you know, there's things here that we have sunshine, we have the, the ocean, we have wind. And so solar, not only solar panel, but a lot of renewable energies, right? Uh, so Portugal is, is very much into that uh, and Europe in general. And even when you build a brand new home, okay, or renovating a house, uh, you got to have one source of renewable energy in the home, um, whether it's solar panels or just solar collectors, et cetera. So you got to have, it's mandatory. Otherwise, they're not going to give you a building license. You got to have, it's mandatory for one source of renewable energy. So solar panels, you know, having, we have so much sunshine, right? That, you know, paying for electricity is, is uh, uh, or we could keep it down low lower and lower because electricity is expensive here for the most part um so a lot of people um where they invest in in the solar uh solar power renewable energies uh baseboard heating through air conditioning recovering systems there's so many uh, um very very good ways uh, to do it now and cost effective okay so you can you can not only heat the home or cool the home throughout the whole year and it's at a minimum like it's a fraction of the cost using all renewable energy. There are some people that actually, they, they actually have, they buy um, solar collectors and they, they sell off uh, the energy to the, uh, um, uh, to the electric companies, you know, the, so there, there's, there's, it's again, we have, uh, we have, we have here uh, uh, wind. So you have uh, windmills to do the renewable energy. We have sun, right. And we have water. So all three elements uh, uh, definitely contribute to Portugal being, you know, just less and less dependent, like on coal mines, et cetera, you know, like uh, other fossil fuels, et cetera. So a lot of, uh, um, especially in the last 10, 15 years, and with a lot of guidelines from the U European Union, they mandate that you have to have X amount, and we do, you know. We have not gone that far here, but man, it would be nice. I mean, we obviously have tons of sun here, too um that is it's just gorgeous i can't imagine what the, well actually i have the links to the views i will share those whenever i post them so that you guys can actually see inside of these properties yeah yeah that's a beautiful property definitely so this is on uh, the bucket list of places to go tell me all about it <laughs> this is benajil cave okay it's in the algarve it's only accessible by boat or by paddles <laughs> you're swimming <laughs> however you can get there um, and it's, you know, this is such a common picture that even um, it's on the windows. It was a window screensaver, okay, mm -hmm. um, for it. And it's in Benajil, it's in the Algarve. And it's one of those things that nature just carved out. It has, the, and the beautiful thing is the color, once you go inside the caves, the colors, the oranges, the browns, the greens, the blues, etc. because of the, 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 the stone. And it's just a hole on top. <laughs> that you know that and then uh, uh where you could see on top of the cave and then accessible through there um through boat or paddle you'll see you see a lot of people just bringing out their their paddling uh there as well so absolutely gorgeous beautiful it's a beautiful one of those must see uh you come to portugal into the algarve uh, uh must see those are the you know portugal again and especially here in the in the north and central part of Portugal, it's characterized by a lot of rivers, right? So um, th this is just one of the, this is in the Douro Valley, which is right outside of Porto. Um, and there's a lot of river beaches because you're about an hour, two hours away from the coastline, right? In some places. So uh, the, the local governments, what they've done for people to enjoy the hot days or whatever, you know, they build these man-made uh, um, beaches there uh, to the side. They have and they have, have lifeguards there as well. You can see there's a small little cruise boats that go up and down uh, there, um, and then people bring their families and for a barbecue, etc. Spend it, you know, on the weekend or a weekday, whatever, um, to use the the river bathing. And it's the uh, Praia Fluvial, so river bathing definitely in in the north and central part of Portugal. There is a lot of river beaches that have been made by the local governments and all of them again have lifeguards because because then there's there's either restaurants or there's a coffee shops there so they have to uh, uh um, they have to they they lease out that that space the government creates all the infrastructures and they lease it out 
and whoever leases that space has to have a lifeguard there uh, for um, while somebody's going, you know, throughout the day, you know, to use the beach and the facilities and everything. So bathrooms, of course, but it's a beautiful area in case you don't want to go to the beach, you want to go to the river, you, you, you know, so that that's uh, and also the countryside. That's what it's characterized right by the mountains. Absolutely gorgeous. more rock formations. So is this in the same area or is it a different area? Yeah, that's in the Algarve. And, and you know, this, if you, uh, that's in the South. Okay. And again, all those rock formations that you see, um, these are centuries, centuries, right? This one is carved out into a heart. It actually looks it. It's called, uh, um, it's called the, the, the beach of the boyfriends and girlfriends, <laughs> right? Because you can imagine on Valentine's Day, people with candles and going there because it's a, it's a beautiful place it's you have to walk walking there it's you you know getting there but when you take it a certain angle the, it's the it's shaped into a heart it's really it's it, no no photoshop there no actually the picture that he sent showed the heart but whenever it fills the screen it takes the the point out but it's absolutely gorgeous all right tell me about this Ah, that's the Doro Valley. Okay, well, the other picture that I saw about the beaches and stuff. And you have the Doro Valley is uh, UNESCO's uh, patrimony of heritage. Uh, you And that's where the, the, the world famous port wine comes from. Okay, from there, that's the Doro River. And you can see the terraces there. That's how it is um, all through the river and throughout the, uh, it, it actually, the river is born in Spain. Um, and when it comes down into Porto, this is where through the valley, uh, the Doro Valley, and that's where the, this is, uh, world famous wine, not only port, but other wines. Uh, it's one of my favorite wine regions of Portugal. Portugal has 12, by the way. <laughs> oh, wow. And this, this is just one of them. It's beautiful. You know, when you go uh, on a, a nice river cruise, whether you're going up or down, uh, this is what you'll see. It's characterized by uh, the valleys, you know, that just go, they, 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 they blend, they go down uh, with the plantations there of wines. All I keep saying is, wow, it's, it's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> no other words, just wow. All right, there's a lot going on here, so break it down for me. That's Porto, okay, Porto. Um, you characterize again by the river, the Douro River, um, and the wine cellars. And that's how the boats, they used to take the, 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 the wine from the valley. They used to come in these uh, wooden boats, uh, and that's Porto by night. Uh, again, the the tram cars and just a few. There's a church there as well, and the city. It's characterized by this colorful, you know, blues and yellows and oranges and stuff. So uh, all, all alongside on the Douro River. Absolutely beautiful. All right, I think next up is can't. Nope, this one's still you. This is gorgeous. Uh, that's that's in the Algarve as well. That's a uh, Praia do Camilo. Um, and it's, uh, again, all those rock formations, very small little beach, gets crowded, <laughs> you know, in the summertime because it's small, right? And it's more picturesque, if anything, you know, you have a beautiful, you can watch a beautiful sunset there as well. The water is gorgeous. So is it, how far out is it blue? Does it's it Mediterranean. The, there, that part is a Mediterranean, actually, you know? So if you could imagine the south of Portugal, uh, with Spain um, and, you know, the that whole area there of like Africa, etc. Uh, that's the south. It's the characterized by the Mediterranean climate where, you know, you don't have difference of highs and low temperatures and the water is the warmest. You know, it's nothing like the North Atlantic where we have here. Uh, there you have like in the summer, it can get up to 24 degrees, 23, 24 degrees or so. Um, whereas here in the summer, even in the summer, uh, in the hottest months, it can only get up to like 20 or 21 degrees. So that's the big difference. But it is, it's nice, blue, uh, clean, um, and warm, uh, more so. I should mention he's talking Celsius and not Fahrenheit. Um, uh, yeah, okay. that's, it's about uh, 22 degrees is like 85, degree, uh, weather, 85 degrees temperature. Scuba diving, my friends won't forgive me if I don't ask, what is that like? The best parts to do the scuba diving is actually around the islands of the Azores and Madeira. Okay. Um, here, scuba diving, it doesn't, you know, I think for me, and, and I'm a scuba diver myself, it's characterized by reef, right? And so uh, Portugal doesn't have a reef. Uh, but if you go Madeira, Madeira, you can, you know, or the Azores, uh, um, you could probably, and then 
even maybe, maybe snorkeling, if anything, you know, where you could dive with the fish. Even there in the south, in the Algarve, um, you'll see some, if you go on a nice boat trip, you'll be able to find some uh, school of dolphins, etc. So it does happen. I've seen it quite a few times every time. I think every time I go on a boat ride there, I'm always watching uh, uh, because that's where they, and you could see there in the south as well. Awesome. This is our capital, which you mentioned looks really close to yours. It, 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 it looks like our city hall of Porto um, um, because it's, you know, it's it's on a big street. And then at the top of the street, it's it's a building. It's very, very similar. That's the capital building there, right? In, in, um, in T Topeka, right? That's where you're at? Yes, this is our capital building in Topeka. And the picture it, is absolutely very similar. Very, very similar. Yeah. And inside is really, really pretty too. I mean, the dome, everything, it's one of the places, if you're coming to Topeka, you have to go see it. It's just absolutely stunning. Brown versus Board of Education. Uh, it's a National Historic Site. Everybody knows what it's about, but it's actually here in Topeka. And there is a, there's a museum basically on the inside to go and tour and see pictures and educate. Evil Knievel. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's from there? Oh, I didn't know that. His memorabilia is here. Yeah, so they actually yeah. have his motorcycles and all kinds of stuff here. It's, it's a- Yeah, motorcycles and everything else. Then he got into rockets, right? But his first thing was always motorcycles at first. Absolutely. A lot of his gear, absolutely. It's, you have to go see it. It's just too cool. This is actually a high school here. This is Topeka High, which is stunning. Um, they still have school here. Very similar, very similar architecture to, uh, like for example, like if you go to well Queen, but you know you have century old architecture as well. But you have like um, very um, um, from that time, from that epic, um, very very similar in so many ways. Like it, it reminds me of like. Whether it's a church or university or something, some some building uh, uh, that's uh, um, been built for centuries. Absolutely, and it's a high school here, so there are a lot of kids that are really lucky that get to go and see this place every single day. But getting tours, uh, they do have tours to go see the school. For sure, it looks beautiful. This is Lake Shawnee, and. Ah. So we don't have the blue water like you do, but we do have the lakes. The so, lakes, and you have th those are uh, those are or no, not orchids, Chris. Uh, tulips. What kind of, you tulips, right? Okay. Yeah. So we have um, each year, and several different of the of the uh, flower gardens have this, but Lake Shawnee has tulip time, and there are just hundreds of thousands of tulips everywhere, every color that you can imagine. And the lake, they have different uh, venues inside of the lake where you can like covered areas where you can have picnics and just hang out. It's really, really pretty. It's just, it's looks, not blue water. Good. You're not gonna go scuba diving in Lake Shawnee. <laughs> no, but it, it's, it's a beautiful lake atmosphere, right? I get it. It absolutely uh... is. Walking trails, that's where a lot of the sports take place. Um, it, you can paddle boat, all kinds of stuff. Okay. You have a zoo also. Zoo. Oh, okay. Yes. So we have the zoo. There's so many animals. It's actually very well known. You have to go see it. There are also several, like the Japanese flower garden is there now, which is stunning. Everything about the zoo is amazing. It's a, you don't want to miss it if you come to Topeka. And then this is the Great Overland Station, um, which is actually a tra train station. Um, it is for domestic, so you could hop a train, go to Missouri, really you could just about go anywhere. But this is the station inside is really, really awesome. Lots of um, history there. It's, it's gorgeous. You have to go at least see it. It looks like our train thing. station as well. It's very similar. <laughs> <laughs> Here so we got Kansas and Portugal. <laughs> or Portugal yeah. and Kansas. Yeah, okay. yeah. And if you're looking to buy in Portugal, Antonio or sell, obviously this is his information. It'll be on the slides whenever it gets loaded so you can hunt him down. But Antonio is, he has stated that his social media, if you go down here to the www.antonio10k.com, 
that's where all of his social media is. So you can check that out. So Antonio, what is something you would like for people to know about you? Um, <laughs> well, you know, it's just that I, I've been living in Portugal for more than 20 years, Carrie. Okay. I grew up in the U.S. Um, I was born in Angola, born in Africa and uh, moved to the U.S. So educated there, very fortunate. Um, and, you know, real estate, it's not it's what I do. It's not who I am. Um, you know, I'm a people person and I really, that's, that's the business that here, and after all the years of just helping people move to Portugal, uh, so many families and that become friends. And that's, what's important, I think. And, uh, that's, that's it. You know, for me, it is the same reasons that I moved here is what I try to convey to people about that quality of life, cost of living, um, safety, everything. Um, and those are the reasons, you know, you walk the walk, you talk, you talk to talk, but you walk the walk. That's the same. And, you know, because that's the same reasons. And I've been always, I've been always trying to promote is Portugal, not so much real estate, but about Portugal for the last 20 plus years, because I think it's, uh, um, it's, I'm happy. I've never been happy uh, here. And I think that's the most important thing when people, um, you got to be happy where you are and what you do. And, and, you know, Portugal is it for me. So hopefully everyone, ha everyone has their own little backyard where they feel that's their place, that this is mine. That's what I want people to know, uh, because it is, uh, uh, it is, a, is a place um, to uh, um, just grow uh, and, you know, be <laughs> with friends. You have, you have time for everything, you know, and then of course you're, you're helping clients and, you know, you're doing uh, moves, you know, with real estate and, and stuff. But, but I think uh, the most important thing is just doing all those things because it's just the natural and you love doing it. That's what it's about. Absolutely. Quality of life. That's, yeah, that's what matters. Yeah. For sure. For sure. And if you're looking to buy or sell, here's my information. It's real estate 101. I'm sorry. Real estate 101 with Carrie Brown. Zoom across America is actually the wrong slide. This is international. Um, and subscribe so that you can travel with me. I'm going to stop sharing here. Okay, so any last words that people should know about Portugal before we go? You know, okay, I'll, real briefly, I'll sum it up this way. I can give you over a hundred reasons why someone should either visit Portugal first or even consider a move to Portugal. But I'll leave you with my top five. Number one, climate. Portugal has over 3,300 hours of sunshine per year, making it one of the highest rates in Europe, okay? Uh, number two, satisfaction year after year uh, when 80 percent of the people who come to visit portugal come back year after year and some do make it their permanent home because of what we just talked about quality of life cost of living uh, portugal is a melting pot of different uh you know before you know from from africa from brazil from the us from from all over, from India, uh, Asia, it's a melting pot, a multicultural diversity, and everybody just, you know, gets along. It's great, you know. Um, number three reason, property values, okay? In comparison to most European cities, uh, major cities, like, for example, like if you go into Paris or Rome or Madrid, Barcelona, uh, the, uh, London, etc., cetera, um, uh, values, or even just in general, uh, here in Portugal or way lower and much competitively priced than other European cities. Number fourth reason has to do with uh, the, the easiness of residency status. There's different ways and even taxes, okay? Living here in Portugal, even somebody that wants to live here, they can qualify for up to 10 years being exempt from IRS. You're not gonna be double taxed if you're a US citizen living here in Portugal. Residency status, you can obtain a second passport without giving up your US citizenship. You keep your US passport. So there's different programs to do that, whether through the golden visa or the passive income visa, otherwise known as the D7 visa. So those are the, the easiness and just simpleness of doing it and the tax benefits and associated, like again, like I said, with the non-habitual resident status makes it the fourth reason. And the fifth reason has to do with safety. Portugal, this is not me, Global Peace Index. Uh, this was last year and this year, but every year we're there in the top five. Portugal, uh, as of 2020, well, 2021, by the Global Peace Index, um, 
classifies Portugal as the third safest country to live in. And there's a variety of factors. Okay, so uh, even this year, it just came out in 2022, International Living Magazine, do a survey by expats every single year. We're number four of the best uh, uh, country, uh, to best in Europe, right? But best in the world as the fourth best country to retire for expats want to live. Um, and so um, that's, I leave with you with five, my top five reasons. Real quick, but, but I give you over a hundred. Well, number six is really should be number one, and the, it's the views. Absolutely gorgeous. For, uh, yeah, the, the, once you try, you know, Carrie, once you try the food, the wine, the people, okay, uh, this Portugal is a very knit, uh, people are, you know, very welcoming, right? So when um, they're, you know, if you come in into a new village and nobody knows you, you don't be surprised if somebody leaves you a little bread or eggs on, on your doorstep. Uh, etc. Then you're helping them pick the grapes, making the wine and everything, you know, so in the small little village, even in the city, people, and it's a multicultural diversity. If you're, even if you're living in the big cities of Lisbon, Porto, or Coimbra, Braga, etc., um, there's so much you will never see, you know, you, oh, I, I miss, I want to have Chinese food. I want to have th Thai food. I want to have Indian food. I want to, uh, I want to, you know, everybody is just, you know, it's a melting pot. And, you know, in Portugal, Portuguese, uh, it's just very welcoming in that sense. So once you try the food and the wine, then you'll say, ah, I made it. And of course, the weather just, and the and the people that, you know, the, the, the happiness you could see, you know, there's, I mean, everywhere, you know, right? Everybody, not everybody's 100%. Uh, there's goods and bads and uglies, right? But if you're happy, people know. And they, we, we do a lot with very little what we have, okay? And that's what it's about. And, you know, and we, we probably have a lot so much to be grateful for, at least, you know, when you look at the sunshine and the great weather, all these things that contribute to well-being and feeling great, uh, that's what's reflected on most people that when they come here and visit and they see it and they experience it and they want it, they, they, want, it, they want to keep it. So that's why they come back. You've sold me right now. There's snow on the ground where I'm at. So <laughs> I sold myself, Carrie. It's again the same reason I'm telling you about Portugal. Um, for me, it was just something I wasn't supposed to. I, I never thought of living here permanently. So I'm I'm an expat myself. Um, I never thought about it. It was something temporary, just you know, to be closer to family, my mother and father. They're no longer here, but you know, I built up a business, built up friends, you know, you have ties, local communities, you're building, you know, and uh, so you have roots and uh, there's no other place in the world, you know, to, that I feel that happiness, this is where I belong. Everyone has it. This is just mine. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much for being a guest. And if you want to know more about Portugal, Antonio's information will be there. I'll share the links so that you guys can tour the inside of the properties. And if you've got any questions, my number is there also. Thanks for joining us on Real Estate Zoom International.